Hi everyone, Bacha here from Recording Studio 9 and thanks for joining me again today. And today I have Simon Larkin. Uh, how are you, Simon? Very good. I'm all right. I'm all right. Well, thanks uh, for the opportunity. I got my dog under the table, man. <laughs> thanks for the opportunity to have a chat all about music. And um, I know you follow yeah. me and I follow you on YouTube as well. And uh, it's been really great. So um, let's introduce you to my YouTube viewers and subscribers. Um, can you tell us about Simon? The background in music and all everything. Simon. Else. I'm a Aboriginal bass player. Um, moved from Glasgow to London at the tender age of 20 mm -hmm. to join a band and find fame and, you know, it went okay. Had some good gigs and supported, met some nice people, some famous people. Ended up doing a lot of session work, which made me spend a lot of time in studios to eventually helping people build studios. Mm -hmm. Yep. So being a bass player, that means you just London. play four notes, right? Because there's four strings. Well, <laughs> That's a bass yeah, player exactly. joke. I'm too heavy handed to play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too clumsy to play guitar. It's too finickety for me. I just stick with a f nice big thick strings, you know, that yes. can hit them hard then. Oh, uh, yes. So, a lot of people actually don't realize so that, was that kind of my... bass is uh, one of the most fundamental instruments that covers all of the energy side of music, the lower end of the spectrum. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why I, I I tried playing guitar. I can play. I started off playing guitar. I started off at seven with classical guitar, and it just never did it for me, you know. And then I, it was a friend of mine at fifteen, fourteen. Let's start a band, you know the thing. Yeah. And uh, he was a better guitar player than me, so I took up bass and just loved it. Very good. And Very I, good. I got not too bad at it. You know, I, I did all right. It made me a, living, a good living for a long, long time. Yeah. I'm in, where am I now? Sweden. God, yes. ended up in Sweden. Met a woman, you know what happens. Fell in love. <laughs> she wanted to go home. So if you want to be with me, you got to follow me. So here I am. I had to stop playing because I damaged my neck quite badly. I had a bit of an accident and I had a lot of nerve damage in my left, ha left arm and couldn't feel it for about four years at all. Mm -hmm. So that kind of stopped me playing bass. I mean, I've had some operations and stuff. So that's I can play again, and I'm up and back playing in some bands and stuff again. So that's it's all good. But that made me kind of think, right? What am I going to do with my life? You know, I haven't. I, if I can't play bass, I can't do building work. I can't. You know, what am I going to do? So I, I went back to the studio stuff, and I retrained. I took a course. Um, I had a really good caseworker here to help me find work, and they found me a job in a, a little recording studio in a. I'm not going to say a music school because it's a school of culture, because mm -hmm. the theatre teacher and the art teachers get very annoyed when you say it's a music school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's where I my job, you know, that's my mm -hmm. income, if you like, or the bulk of it. Um, and I'll say, yeah, building my own studio now. I mean, I've always had. Wherever we've lived, I've had a room so that I can at least do mixing work. So I always take on projects mm -hmm. with mixing and stuff. But now with this place we've bought, I've actually got an old barn from the mid 1800s that was built, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, building a yeah. studio now. I've got space out there for a live room and yeah. Yes. Now it's coming um, on. I first it's actually. Take a while. Simon, I met you uh, and got got to know you and your work for and your videos on YouTube. Um, when I was doing uh, research and trying to find out about other people building studios. Um, so can you tell mm -hmm. us about your studio that um, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're still in the process of building it? Yeah, well, I mean, what I've done is I prioritized my uh, control room first because, mm -hmm. it's, you know, obviously I had mixing work that I had ongoing. So I needed to get that done first. But I spent the whole of this summer building that and I mean part of the reason how I found you was again looking for tips and building studios and you know <laughs> making the most of it so yeah I mean that's probably I don't know what's that about 25 square meters for that room that yeah. I then uh, after insulation I mean I've put in about a foot of insulation right around the walls built false walls and you know the what you got to do mm -hmm. um 
So yeah, that's coming on. But I've got a live room as well. I had a band over in October. Was it October from from Glasgow? Yep. And we recorded an album out there, and I got it the live room ready enough to record in. I built a drum room, and you know, so a little cobbled together thing at the <laughs> moment. But you know, it did the job. It sounded good. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I, yeah, re I recorded. It's all about mic placement. Yeah, I mean, I recorded in my studio where I didn't have walls. Uh, you know, it was still the acoustic. You know, uh, bats bats out, and that was yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so you got to do what you got to do to actually do the recording. <laughs> so this is it. I mean, they were booked in, and it was a panic. I mean, it was a uh, it was hard work all the summer getting it ready. I got to admit. And I think when they first walked in, they must have thought, oh, my God, we've flown <laughs> over to Sweden for this. But after the first couple of hours, they, they realized, you know, we, we got the drum track, a couple of drum tracks down and they, you know, they realized. So it, it, worked, it worked out well. I mean, I'm still mixing that album. Part of the reason being we recorded so many tracks. Um, I did double takes of everything with four mics and guitar cabs and mm -hmm. Just to be sure, because they were coming over from Glasgow, and I couldn't just shout them back and say, "Could you just come and do another guitar take on this <laughs> yeah, track?" Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I want to double up the guitars on this one. So everything was double tracked and quadruple tracked, and so I've had to. Sp I spent about two months going through everything we recorded and weeding out mm -hmm. what I need to use. And typically, all the guitar <laughs> tracks I went straight to the SM57s, uh -huh. and all those other condenser mics I put on got yep. thrown away. You know. Yeah, so it's typical. These days, you're quite busy with all um, uh, music work. I mean, mixing and all those things in the new studio. In mixing, I've just had another album come in that I'm I'm working on. Um, so I'm kind of juggling the two albums at the moment. I mean, the the, the lads from October that's that's nearly finished. I've got a couple of songs to finish off there, and we're done. But uh, this new one's just come in, so I try not to have too much on the go because it just gets a bit too much. And I want to concentrate on projects one at a time, kind of thing. I'm not very good at juggling between, especially if it's different uh, genres of music. Yes, yes, it's a, there's a new album that's come in, it's quite poppy, whereas the other one was metal, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the same same thing uh, goes here. I normally take one project at a time. Uh, I try not to squeeze mm -hmm. any more than two projects at a time. I say, look, if you want it, then you you gotta wait uh, a couple of weeks before I can actually free up time. Because, um, as you would know, it is a creative process that we need to go through. Whether we're mixing or recording um, or mastering the song, um, you know, you really have to put the time in. Otherwise, it's just not gonna turn out well. Exactly. I mean, it's it's all you just say. It's a creative process. It's music. It's not. You're not a machine. You're not churning out produce. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You're creating a, a sound. You're creating music. It takes time, and sometimes it doesn't happen straight away. Sometimes you know. Sometimes you struggle to find. I mean, I have a little bit of a strange way of working. Some clients like it. Some don't. But I tend to send kind of off the wall mixes to them when I first get a project. Mm -hmm. I explain that I'm going to do this, but they when they don't realise what I'm going to do till I do it, <laughs> and I'll send some strange mixes. I, I like to test the boundaries of what they will like and what they don't like, yes. and what they want and what they don't want. Yeah. You, do you understand what I mean? So I deliberately throw some curveballs at them just to see how far I can push them. Yes, yes. Find a sound and then I roll with that. You know. But some people, I don't know, some people find it a little bit odd. They think, oh, does this guy really know what he's doing? But <laughs> it's all deliberate, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I mean, one thing uh, clients, I try to uh, actually get the clients to understand that it's a process. I'm going to send you uh, exactly. a, a sample exactly. now that I've, my first draft mix. This may not be what it's going to sound like, but this is the draft mix. And they go, well, wow, it doesn't sound anything like what I expect. I said, it's a draft mix. It's back and forward. It's communication. And we need to work out yeah. what I want, to, what I envisage, what the sound, song should sound like. And then I need to understand what you want the song to sound like. So it's, you know, it's a process that we need to yeah. go to. And they go, ah, oh, that's okay then. I thought this was the last mix. Yeah. Was, uh, I mean, one thing <laughs> 
Yeah. When they finally get that song that, that they're happy with, then they understand. Yes. This is the thing, isn't it? That's right. That's right. You know. um, um, no, but I always try to get them to focus on, on elements and just see, will that guitar sound work? Will that, mm-hmm. you know, drum sound or whatever? And, yeah. Um, just going back to your studio, um, what's your main interface that you use to uh, if you're recording in the live room? I'm a I'm a I'm a Focus Stray guy, so I've got a couple of Focus Stray um, sapphires that I use with uh, an old Octopree, um and the silver face one with the compressor and every channel, and that's pretty much how I've been for years. It's always been Focus Stray. Right. So. Yep. Okay, welcome back, Simon. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> now, let's talk about uh, your YouTube channel. You just passed your 1,000 subscriber. So, it certainly did. So it's definitely growing. Can you tell us um, yeah. what videos and what information you have on your YouTube channel? It's all mainly about Reaper. I mean, the whole reasoning behind it was to answer certain questions I couldn't get answered when I, I came over from Cubase originally. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it took me a few years of going backwards and forwards between Cubase and Reaper and, and Cubase and Reaper before I finally kind of switched. I think it was at version three. I found it stable enough. It wasn't so much the program wasn't stable. It didn't like some plugins. This was uh, the main thing. Um, so at mm-hmm. version three, it finally was working for me with everything. So I, I've made the full switch. And I used the forums, the Reaper forums, are, are fantastic. If anybody mm-hmm. uses Cubase, any Steinberg users out there, they know how cruel the Steinberg forums are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unless you've got the top notch of everything, they don't want to know you. You know, mm-hmm. and I just, that really put me off Steinberg. And also, when I first had my first daughter, um, you know the little dongle you get with Cubase? Yes, yes. I had it sticking out the front of the computer, and she's crawling about, and you know what happens. <laughs> She smashed yeah, don't it. Don't tell me. <laughs> uh, so I contacted Steinberg and I says, I explained what happened. Can I have a new dongle? And the answer was no, you have to buy a new program again. And I was like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> you know, I have the program, but the dongle's blown. I'd quite happily pay for the dongle, but, you know, no, 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 no. You'll have to buy. And I went, right, you can stick but, it with but, the sun, don't you? Wouldn't they have uh, a record of you actually? purchasing the program yeah. and the dongle yeah. um, but they couldn't send out a dongle without me reissuing a new license for the program this was the problem oh. so to reissue a new license i had to buy a new license because right. you don't buy the program these days that you buy the license so yeah it was a little i kind of see it from their point but also i thought is there not a little bit of bending could have gone on here you know yeah. um, I, I personally it, just hate the dongle um, I hate them. It has... I, mean, I, I'm used, I have an eye lock, I have to admit, but I do. I never used to have one, but yeah. I try to avoid them. But I'm actually loving it because I can go between home and work yeah. but, uh, and um, use my own uh, plugins and software in the studio that I work in and yeah. at home. You know, I can have them so I can put the licenses even yep. when I talk to them. I can uh, put the licenses okay. even though I get I just had to go on, mate. So, I mean, as I say, I got so, so much help and friendly help from the Reaper forums. That, uh, that's mm-hmm. what made me decide, right, now I'm going to switch. Mm-hmm. Um, they helped me. I mean, God, I've been using Reaper over 10 years now, it must be. And um, because I got so much help, I, th- I thought that there were still certain questions I couldn't find answers for. Mm-hmm. So I thought I'll start my channel and do it and give something back to the Reaper community. This was the whole reason behind it to begin with. But then it's just kind of, you know, and it has, I've stuck to that kind of basis. I want to try and show people that you don't have to buy expensive plugins mm-hmm. to do certain things. You can't, uh, can't with, Yeah, with, with, with Reaper, um, for the price, the $60 that you pay, um, yeah. you get enough uh, plugins as well. The, uh, I, I love the built-in plugins, the uh, you know the stock plugins of Reaper. 
Um, yeah. They're just fantastic. Um, you know, you can do so much uh, with it. It's uh, mm -hmm. for the price. You, there's no way you can beat. I've been using Reaper probably about seven years. I started yeah. with version four. I purchased version four yeah. and always um, upgraded it um, as well. So, yeah. But it Reaper is not my main. Um, well, you're more a Presonus guy. Yeah, I, I'm the Presonus guy. Yeah. Um, but I do use Reaper uh, for a lot of other projects, whether people send me um, a Reaper project or sometimes Reaper is much lighter to actually use than uh, Studio yeah. One or any of the others. It makes it really easy yeah. to um, just sort of quickly adopt. Well, what's or, the plan for your YouTube channel? What sort of videos we should expect to see in the future? What's really down, the, down the tube? Doing what I'm doing. I mean, I just want to, you know, if I is what I do is if I find something that I think is interesting. If I'm working on a project and I come across something, like my last one was about drum augmentation and drum replacement, yeah. and I just found a really cool way of doing it. And I thought, all right, I'll, make, I'll just make a quick video while I'm mixing the track, and that's yeah. yes. always how I've worked. Yes. So it's more just uh, if I think something's interesting. I'm not a very regular uploader. I mean, it can be. A, a month will go by and I'll put nothing up. It's just because I haven't come across anything that I thought would be interesting enough yeah. to put up. Yeah. And that's but, just how I, like, I try to keep it, you know? Yes, yes. But well, I'm, it's not I'm, about, I guess, it's not about the quantity, but the quality. Exactly. That's yeah. how I always want to do it. I want to make it interesting and I want it to be something that's not just what everyone else is doing. Yes. You can go on YouTube and find, find how to work an EQ or a compressor. <laughs> Yes, a million times over, you know. But mm. a lot of guys a lot more experienced than me. Mm. It's I want to try find the little quirks, the interesting things, you know. Yes. But I've got little plans. I thought now that I am kind of gone over that thousand mark, I would like to build a bit of a community. So I actually gave in. Somebody was telling me that I should do this for a long time, and mm -hmm. I started a Patreon account. Mm -hmm. But I don't, it's not for me. What I want to do is to start doing giveaways. You actually gave me the idea. Yes. Believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. it's, to, yes. You know, it, it's like a, a group buying thing or something and then have a yeah. raffle or something and do something with, with software giveaways, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of my plans more to build a community. I yes. mean, in terms of videos, it will just be how I've been doing it pretty much. Yeah. Well, uh, can I admit something, Simon, uh, to you? Yeah. I actually watch, I, I watch all of your videos uh, on Reaper, but mm. I have actually copied some of your ideas from Reaper and put in Personas at Studio One. <laughs> I know. I'm I'm, I'm guilty. <laughs> I, I find that a compliment, to be honest. I, I've spotted there's a couple of people in the the Reaper Facebook group that I spotted a couple of videos that people are doing. The, it was the same video I'd done yeah. years ago, yeah. you know, and they're, they're kind of yeah. doing the same video, and I, I put a little hmm comment yeah. on it. Well, I don't mind. <laughs> to me, it's well. The all thing good. is. It's, it's about not, sharing. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's right. And it's not about, uh, like, uh, when I actually watch it, I go, oh, oh, Simon just gave me an idea. I wondered if I can do it in Studio One because all of the audio routing and everything else is different in Studio One than in, in, in Reaper. I wondered if I can reproduce that in Studio One. And yeah. once I work out how to do it, I go, well, maybe something. this is something I can share because this is... Uh, a new technique, a new way of doing uh, the audio routing or how to process something, whether if it's bus processing or whether if it's uh, a group, uh, you know, processing, whatever the case was, you know, and I, once I was able to do it in Studio One, then I thought maybe I'll share this one as well. So that's, that's, that's what uh, we do. And that, again, um, it's all about sharing the information. Uh, yeah. That's what we yeah, are. Yeah, the yeah. stuff that I'm doing isn't like it's not anything that I've uniquely invented. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I pick up ideas from other people, and that's what mm -hmm. this business is all about, isn't it? We learn from each other. If you that's if right. you ever stop learning, there's something <laughs> wrong with you. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Uh, that's when I can. I think as the, there's a saying. That uh, the day you stop learning is the day uh, you are six feet under. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, or it's the day you stop doing something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. No, I, well, I agree. 
Well, thank you, Simon, so much uh, for this yeah. uh, time uh, for me to introduce you to my uh, viewers. And uh, mm -hmm. I will put the link in the video and as well as in the description of your channel. So people who are interested in Reaper um, are able to actually go to your channel because I don't believe I have many or if any Reaper uh, videos on Reaper. So this yeah. will be a good opportunity so people who are interested in um, in your videos they can come and visit you and um, learn uh, something new sure nice one I well, think nice to find here I thank you so much that. for your time and uh, hope to see new videos up as well and um, we actually I want to see uh, finished up the live room video yeah, yeah, finished up the live for a couple room. of months yeah <laughs> that's okay we can wait <laughs> we can wait I'll video tomorrow <laughs> Thank you, Simon, and you have a, a lovely day. You too, mate. See you later. See you later. Bye-bye.